In this video, I'm going to talk about how to calculate the dividend payout ratio. But before we get into the formula, it's good to kind of get a conceptual idea for, for what's going on. So let's picture uh, our earnings uh, as kind of kind of a pool here. So we've got some earnings, some, some net income in a period. Now remember that this net income, this is part of a larger thing called equity. So this is our, our owner's equity, our shareholder's equity, and, and the net income is going to become a part of it. Now we can have a payout as we add to our equity with this net income and the equity becomes larger. Uh, we can pay some of this out to shareholders. And that's what we call the dividend distribution. But now the question is, well, how much of this, of this, this, uh, this earnings actually gets distributed back to the shareholders. Uh, is it 50%? Is it 25%? Some firms might not give any of it back. They might think that they want to reinvest it. So, so we want to say, okay, well, how much? Maybe it's this amount, and then we're going to go ahead, and that's what we're trying to calculate is what's the payout of any earnings to the shareholders to get an idea of, of how this income is going to be distributed. So now let's, let's get down uh, to the formula. And what we have is uh, the payout ratio is, is basically the cash dividends. Uh, so this, this distribution, so that distribution, and now we're talking about the distribution to common shareholders. So just, just regular shareholders, not, not the preferred shareholders. Okay, so cash dividends to common shareholders, and then we're going to divide that by uh, net income, that's the, the amount of the profit, and then we're going to subtract out preferred dividends because what we really want to see here, what we really want to see, let me return to this. Uh, so we really want to see of this net income, what's the portion that goes to uh, the, the common shareholders? And so we really don't, we're really not interested in what's going on with the preferred shareholders right now. So let's, let's just isolate and just think about the cash dividends to the to common shareholders and then uh, out of the net income that is available to be distributed to them. Because if we start throwing this in there, then that's going to give us maybe an inaccurate picture of, of how generous, or maybe generous isn't the right word, how much of this net income the firm chooses to distribute uh, to these common shareholders. So let's work through an example. So in our example, uh, let's say that a firm has net income in a period of $100, and then they have preferred dividends, preferred div of $2. And then let's say that the common, the dividends to the, the common stock shareholders, just the regular shareholders, so we'll just call it We'll just say, we'll, we'll call it cash dividend too. We're not talking about property here, just cash dividends. Uh, let's say that's, that's $5. So now we have to figure out that percentage of the pie, that percentage of the pie here, what, what is this? What percent is this that's, that's being divvied out to these uh, common shareholders? So now let's just plug into our formula up here. So we'll have this payout ratio is gonna be equal to, and now we've got the cash dividends, which are five dollars divided by the net income of a hundred dollars, but uh, adjusting for that two dollars of, of preferred dividends. Let's get that out of there and let's just focus on what we've got. So we got five dollars divided by ninety-eight. That's going to give us 0 0.051, which can also we can just interpret that as a percentage, and so we'll say. 5.1%. So how can we think about this 5.1%? What does that number mean? Well, that means that the firm had a certain amount of earnings and it paid out 5.1% of those earnings to the common shareholders. Now we, we kind of adjusted for that $2 because that wasn't really available to be given to the common shareholders. That was set aside for the preferred uh, uh, shareholders. So, so there was, it was ultimately there was ninety-eight dollars available to be given to the the common shareholders, and of that, five point one percent of it uh, was distributed back to the shareholders in the form of a dividend. So, so why does this matter? Now that we know the percentage, uh, uh, who cares? Well, we have to think about this. Is there's different types of investors. So, an investor who maybe 
uh, is thinking more, maybe they're retired and they're thinking more about, about cash now, uh, they're going to care more. They want a firm that has a higher dividend payout ratio. They, they want a higher payout because they don't know how much long they've got to live. They're retired. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. But they're, they're 70, they're 80. They're not really caring about uh, what's going on with this firm 40 years down the road. They need to maximize cash now. Okay, so they need uh, a high payout. They want some kind of income from this. Uh, but let's say you have someone uh, who's a, a lot younger than me. Let's say someone in their 20s. I, I'm getting, you know, I, well, I guess I'm not close to the retired category, but I'll get there someday. So you have someone, someone young and, and spry, and they say, you know what, I don't care about the payout. Uh, matter of fact, I'd actually rather uh, that the firm just uh, just reinvest uh, that money. Maybe that doesn't need a hyphen. I'm not sure. Uh, just reinvest those earnings uh, into the business because I think that if you reinvest into the business, uh, you can make even more money uh, with new projects, and the business can increase in value, and then the stock price will go up, and this this young person is is very happy. Uh, so that's why this young person might actually prefer a firm uh, with a low uh, dividend payout uh, because they want a firm that's actually going to be reinvesting those dividends and growing. 